Hey, welcome back to the Penny Pen. Thank you once again for joining me. My name is Eric, and today I am reviewing this fountain pen. This is the Eboya Kyoka Ebonite Fountain Pen, uh, size large in Kogetsu Yellow. Uh, now, this pen I've done a review or I've done an unbox, an unboxing rather about two weeks ago. So if you want to check that out and see what um, the box looks like, what comes with it and all that, uh, you can watch that video on my channel. Uh, this this video is going to be more about my impressions using it, um, what I think about it. Um, I have been using it uh, every day at work for about two weeks. And um, yeah, I just wanted to just talk about it a little bit in depth. Uh, I will also say that this video is in discussion with a video posted by Dr. Stephen Brown. Uh, about five years ago, he reviewed a um, Evoya large as well. And there are some points that I agree with him and there are some points that I disagree with him. Um, and there are some things I think that have changed in the manufacturing. And so, uh, yeah, a lot of my points I'll be um, bouncing off of what he uh, mentioned in his video from 2016. <laughs> um, so I just want to get started by talking about what I think um, is uh, what detracts from this pen the most, and that is the nib. Now, this pen, uh, the company Eboya, um, doesn't make their nibs. They are supplied by um, Bach. So the nib that comes with this pen is a number six, uh, 14 karat gold Lebach nib. And out of the box, this nib did not perform well at all. Um, it was dry, it was inconsistent, skips didn't start. Um, and it was only until I flushed it out with the bulb syringe that the nib started working uh, at a you know adequate level. It's not a big deal. Um, but I was not really pleased by it because I had to clean it. You know, out of the box, you usually want your nibs to work and function. But the good thing about this pen is that you can actually remove the nib and the feed from the section housing here. Very simple. It's just threaded in. And um, yeah, so easy to clean. And uh, that's how I cleaned it with the bulb syringe. I flushed out the nib with water. And like I said, it worked fine after that. So. That was my first impression with the, the writing aspect of this pen. And it's not the fault of the company because they don't make their own nibs. Um, I guess I should also mention some, if you're not familiar with Eboya as a company, they are a Japanese company and they are like a, uh, under the umbrella of a, the company in Japan. I think it's only one company in Japan that makes Ebonite and sells it, sells it, which is uh, Nico, yeah, Nico Ebonite. So Eboya is a sub subsidiary of them. They handcraft their pens and they even have a shop in Japan where you can buy the pens or you can also order them online on their website. They say the wait time for the manufacturer and shipment is up, can be up to six months. Uh, I was fortunate in that um, Pensachi had uh, got a batch of these, and so I only had to wait like a couple of weeks for shipping for it to arrive from Japan. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about was the size of this pen. Is in terms of its posted, in terms of its uh, closed length not very long. You can see here in comparison with the Pilot Metropolitan, it's almost, you know, it's almost the same length. It's almost the same length practically. So it's not a long pen. And when you uncap it, again, the Metropolitan, there is a slight difference because the nib is obviously larger but not a huge difference. And then it only becomes apparent the size of the pen when you post it. Um, now, I think this pen is designed to be posted. Um, 
in Dr. Brown's video, he mentioned that the posted cap did not go all the way down. So I don't know if they changed that. I don't know if the one, the model he received was not manufactured correctly, but this one does post all the way down to the body of the pen. And I like the sort of um, mirror aesthetic of this because when the pen is screwed in, you have the knurling here on both ends, and then you have the cap. And then when you post the pen, it's almost like a mirror reflection of the pen when it's um, capped. You have the, the capped pen, uh, the capped, you have the cap here at the end, and then you have the knurling right next to it. And you have the knurling at the end, and then instead of the back section, you have the nib the section and the feed here. So I like that design and I like the fact that it does post all the way down. Um, and as I said, I think this pen is designed to be posted because um, it's a lightweight pen, ebonite is a lightweight material. And when it's, uh, when it's not posted, it's perfectly fine. Um, you don't need it to post nor to write with it like some other pens like a Cavego Sport. But I just think that the design is really what makes me think that this is this is designed to be posted. The fact that it has that mirror um, aesthetic, it makes it feel like the pen is like, I don't know, complete without without the cap. It feels like it's, you know, it's not complete. Um, and with the cap, it does feel like and then post so like nicely too, like flush with the body of the pen. That's another reason why I think it's designed to be posted. All right. Um, oh yes. Yeah. So something I think um, can be a deal breaker for some people, especially people with smaller size hands is the girth or the circumference of the body of this pen. This is a girthy pen. When I first started using it, I thought that. And now a few weeks later, I still think that. And it's not unwritable. It's you can still write with it, but I've I've had to adjust my sort of range of motion in my hand to actually accommodate this pen. Um, my hands are average large size hands. I'll show you it. That's a Pilot Metropolitan there. Pilot Metropolitan. I need to post it in order to write with it comfortably. But this Evoya pen is girthy, and I feel like a lot of people will be put off by that. And with good reason, because for some people, it may be just way too uncomfortable to write with it. If I were to ever buy another, um, if I were to buy a smaller model, um, the models come in small, medium, and large. Um, definitely, I would size down, I think, for a more comfortable writing experience. But that's just my preference. Some people might prefer that girthy size. More power to you. Uh, ebonite. I want to talk about the ebonite. So I'm not an uh, expert in ebonite by any means. I'm an absolute layman. Um, but as far as I can tell, it looks like good quality. Uh, I don't see any obvious signs of defect. There's no like cracks or anything. In fact, I even... I did drop this pen once. Um, it was in my um, shirt pocket and then I bent over and it slipped out of the pocket because it doesn't have a clip and it landed flush on the um, laminate flooring. Like a, probably felt like a foot. And I looked over it, didn't see any cracks, looked fine. So I feel confident in saying that the material is good quality and for the price of this pen, you would expect good quality. Um, in terms of the minimal design that's going on here, I'm a fan of pens with minimal designs. I don't like um, brightly colored garish pens. What's what I would consider garish, some people might consider beautiful and pretty. So it's all to taste, obviously. But I like this. I like that it's understated, like Japanese designs. And I like that it doesn't call attention to itself. 
um, other than the size and the mottled yellow in um, in the ebonite itself. And even that is understated because, you know, there are ebonite pens with way more going on in terms of color. And this one is just enough for me, um, which is why I was attracted to it. And the ends of the pen as well, they kind of have like this uh, swirly design to them that I like. Uh, the knurling itself here, that doesn't really do too much for me. Um, in fact, I probably would like to see this pen without it. I don't think it necessarily needs it to unscrew the cap. I don't, I, I rarely hold on to it and use it as a grip, to be honest. You can, I feel like I can unscrew it without using the knurling as a grip. And I think aesthetically it would be more pleasing for me, for my tastes. But it's, it's fine. It's fine. Some people might like it. Um, so, you know, more power to you for that. Um, oh, and just quickly back to the posting, the, um, the point about the posting. I don't normally post my pens. I don't normally like to post my pens. I only do so when it's necessary to actually write with it. Like with the Pilot Metropolitan, like with the Kaveco Sport, you can you know, the pen is so small, unposted, it's, you know, it's almost demanded that you post them. Um, but with other pens, um, with caps, I don't usually post them because I don't like that back heavy feeling. And I don't, I like, like I said, I like a clean design and most pens don't have the flush posting. Um, but I do like posting this pen. It's enjoyable to me. And because the material is ebonite, because it is lightweight, I don't feel like it back weights it that much. I don't really... F there is obviously a difference in terms of weight and feel, but I like the feeling of the weight with the, with the cap added, posted. It makes it feel like it's a little bit more um, durable, more hefty, more stable. I like that feeling um, to a degree. You know, obviously, if it's way too heavy, um, like the Sailor 110th anniversary, then sometimes I'll like it. Sometimes I'll be like, why am I writing with this, you know, brick? But this one, I feel, has gotten the combination just right. Um, oh, another thing is they make pens. They have different models, uh, Aboya, with clips. Um, in the future, if I were to buy from this company again, I think I would definitely buy a, a clipped version because this thing rolls. Um, this thing uh, rolls like a stone, you know, like a rolling stone. It, it rolls off the table, so I have to be careful with it. I um, have to make sure it's secure um, when I get up. And I, I would want it clipped to my pocket, you know, to prevent any falling out. Um, just another small thing in terms of um, screwing or opening it, uh, the screw cap. I think it's about, it's not a full 360 degrees. It's about 320 degrees to unscrew it. So it's not like you have to make multiple revolutions. It's a pretty quick... Uh, pretty quick unscrew cap here. Uh, so something with regards to the pricing of this pen I wanted to talk about was whether or not this pen at the price that it is is actually worth purchasing and worth owning. So on Pensashi I bought this pen for $550. On the Eboya website um, this same model um, they're pricing at or uh, 430 I think and that's um, USD and for what you're getting a handcrafted ebonite um, modeled color mo modeled color fountain pen I don't know if the premium you're paying is actually worth it or not because there are other ebonite handcraft manufacturers out there um, that price their pens, you know, 
half uh, ha they have half the price of what this pen costs uh, Ranga or Ranga um, for example um, someone commented that that they also make Ebonite, um, they also make handmade Ebonite fountain pens and I looked at, uh, I looked into them because I wasn't too familiar with them and yeah it looks like this pen obviously the designs are different but what are you really getting more of from this brand versus another brand like Ranga or Ra uh, Ranga? Uh, because the nibs are the same, you can buy a 14 karat gold nib. Um, it's so it's going to be like you know another extra hundred dollars, but it's still going to be almost half the price of this one. So what are you really paying for? And I don't have an answer. I don't know. Um, I don't own any other Ebonite um, handcrafted. Well, actually, I do own um, one other Ebonite fountain pen, I believe. I don't know. In editing, I will pop in here and say how many I own. But in the future, I will definitely be curious to compare this with other Ebonite fountain pens that I buy. And I definitely will be looking into it and see, you know, if there really is a difference in terms of quality. Um, writing experience, I'm not going to really talk about, or I don't think it's really fair to compare because, well, might be because, you know, well, no, I don't think it's really fair to compare because companies don't make the nibs so the, the writing performance I feel like is in the nib in the feed and the you know that way it doesn't make either of those so it's not really on them how it writes yeah so that's just another thing to keep in mind um, you know if the aesthetic if the, the artisanal aspect of the pen appeals to you maybe it is going to be worth $500 uh, for a lot of people, I can understand that it wouldn't be worth $500, especially when they can get a much cheaper um, pen that's also made of ebonite, that's also handcrafted, and with the same nib. So, you know, that is totally to each individual's uh, taste and opinion and perspective. And I feel like I'm still not sold on whether or not this pen was worth the price that I paid for it. I, f I feel like I was sold mostly on the marketing because this pen is marketed as a scarcity product because it's handmade. Um, it takes some time for them to produce it. These aren't, these aren't uh, mass produced in a, in a factory. And that Part of the marketing is what sold me on buying it in the first place. The fact that, you know, if you don't buy it now, you're going to wait another six months for another batch to come out or whatever the case may be. And I'm not upset or angry that I bought into the marketing. I'm just, um, I don't know how I feel. Overall, I like the pen, but... Do I like it enough to, to try to justify to you whether or not you should buy it for at this price? Um, ultimately, for five hundred dollars, I don't know. My my feeling right now is no, it's not worth the price, um, especially when you can get cheaper. You know, when there are brands out there that are offering similar pens, similar designs, similar. Um, material for a lot cheaper but now that I own the pen maybe that's a buyer's fallacy but I do like it I'm glad I own it it's an interesting pen um, I like that I like the, um, the glossiness of the pen they polish it before sending it out I like the um, the story the pen tells you know, this uh, manufacturer in Japan, handcrafted parent company makes Ebonite. It's the, like the only Ebonite company in Japan. I like that story. And um, at, 
this price range for fountain pens, which are a luxury product, um, the story, I feel, is definitely a component in whether or not it's worth it to you to buy and to own. So those are my thoughts. Those are my impressions. Um, briefly to go over it, um, this is a just basics. This is a cartridge converter pen. It came with a standard, I think it's a Pelican, um, but it, they say it takes any standard in, international cartridges or converters. Closed diameter, uh, a closed length, according to um, Pensachi is 150 millimeters. Diameter body is 18 millimeters. Weight is 31 kilograms. Um, the company also has, as I said before, pens in a small and a medium size. So if I do buy from this company again, I will definitely be buying a medium. And I think that will alleviate some of the issues I have with the girthiness um, of this pen. But yeah, thank you again for joining me on the Penny Pen. I hope this review was helpful to you. Um, I hope um, I gave you some food for thought. And if you have any other questions or if you have, you know, if you want, if you have your opinions about this pen, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And until next time, take care.